Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Sake Sundays. Happy to be here. I gotta say a special shout out to God's favorite jewels. You know, got me right with my hematite. Got the tiger's eye around my neck. And we got this little beauty for our guests here. A shout out to my brother. This is Troy Michaels. Tell him about yourself. What you do, bro? Let's see. Uh, lifelong martial artist. Uh, creative entrepreneur. Historian. Academic. And everything in between, I guess. Yes. Sit back. Try to stay centered. Now. Yeah. So, what started your journey as a creator? I mean, that's been a lifelong journey. I started off as a kid drawing and painting. And spending my time in between that. Originally, we wanted to pursue that as a career. You know, 18, 19 years old. The reality of the economy hits, changes things up for right? But I've always had that creative plug that needed to be channeled. So started with drawing, painting, funneled it into martial arts, which I've been doing since probably 2006. Still doing it now. Picked up a camera and just everything clicked, right? Lighting, compositions, color, comp all of that. And so just that was sort of the funnel to put everything. But I've been doing my life is zeroing with that, with that tool. And just picked up the camera and ran with it, just seeing where it's taken me since then. So. Well, I didn't know that you uh, used to paint and draw. Yeah. Well, I need to see something. Okay, I'll Did see. Have you ever uh, presented like in a space? Um, no, I have. So I was painting all the way up until college. And I have a couple of paintings that I've been missing. Did you take classes for it or was it just something that came naturally? Both. I took both, right? Uh, it came natural, but I also took I took courses. You know, I'm also a published author. I had a short story published on years, it was about like 2004 or five. What was it about? It was like a. What inspired it? It was a, for a creative writing course, and they just had us write a short story in a hundred words, you know, and then. And I had to hit every element of that particular plot. So I took the revenge plot, wrote a short story in a hundred words, and it just slapped. And the, the teacher took it and, and, and submitted it to a contest, and it got published. You know, so. so it was the teacher's idea? Yeah. Let's go. You need to get a copy of it. I know. It, well, it's so long, you know, like, that. we're talking 2004, pre-iPhone. Like, I, I, I know where the computer is, where all of that original stuff it is, is, but it's like, yeah. I was thinking more so along the line of the figure and who printed it. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. You think you guys write something again? I still do. Eventually, uh, I'm going to my podcast where it's such a So, and I still write historical pieces. Yeah, yeah. 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 you have a master's in history? No, it's my bachelor's. The original plan was to get the PhD at UCLA. It's a little bit of a long story, but basically, fine. I was in, but I was smoozing, I was meeting with the, you know, the board, etc. And basically, there was a glitch. They received my, my letters of rec, my transcripts, all of that, but my just digital application never uploaded. And I, well, I had created this Gmail account that the emails were going to, and I wasn't getting my notifications. Me and all my roommates were all applying at that same time. JDs, MDs, masters, and then also be a PhD. And so everyone's like, oh my God, I got in, I got in. I was like, why didn't I get a, a yes or a no? I didn't even get a like. I was so, no. so by the time I figured it out, I already chose the cohort, right? So I reapplied for um, the next year, was the number one on the run. So then by the time I was like, okay, if I, re if I do a third time, I know I'm going to get in, but at that point, I got a high paying job. I was making money. I was like, you know what? I think my plan is to save up a bunch of bread, open up a business, and then I'll go back for the PhD, like later on in life. And just kind of maybe you know, self fund or whatever, but just do it like towards the end and, and research for, for research sake, right? As opposed to trying to make a career out of it and, and build, build up a business that can work and grow from there and then find that stuff. Oh, for sure. Uh, you did go to UCLA though, right? Yeah. 
How do you feel about the school? I mean, I loved it. So the program, when I, I transferred in, when I went to community college and then transferred in, and they had a program for, like, non-traditional students, students of color, older, all different, like, you know, not just coming straight out of high school, yeah. or good grades, et cetera. And that program had the like radical roots. So it was a founded, so I don't know if you've heard of uh, the two Black Panthers, um, Bunchy Carter and Cousins that were murdered on the Sillies campus. Now, so back in the 60s, during the peak of, of uh, the Black Power movement and, and the Panthers, they had uh, two students were, uh, two Black Panthers were murdered on campus. And so um, at that place is where they, they built out this, it's like a hub to help, stu- you know, um, these marginalized students from around the world to connect with each other and tap into some more like radical roots, right? So, I mean, the, one of my main mentors there was a woman who back in the day was literally building bombs with the weapon men to overthrow the government back in the 60s. So she's partially deaf right? uh, because she blew her hearing out like building bombs. <laughs> That's how I like, tried to overthrow the government. Wow. The so, uh, so there's like a deep tradition. So we don't just look to consulting, to food, right? Just everything that's coming from the office. We just have these articles about animals and all this kind of stuff. But that's where I got that radical, like, like, question of the day. Right. Big stuff to write about. You think they're aliens among us? Most definitely. <laughs> You know, so the more specific you get, the harder it becomes to answer. The only reason I say you think they're shapeshifters was because of like, do you think that the Aryans look like us, like innately? Do you think that they walk among us looking like us? Or you think they like so high tech, they walk right around us, but they're invisible. We just don't see them. I think, I, I think all of the above. I literally think all of the above, everything in between, probably stuff we haven't even mentioned. Right. So like, all right, so since we're on this topic, I, before 2020, would have, like, just brushed this off like crazy, right? And then... And then you saw something. No, it, well, it's a little bit, but it started with, like, it's, all right, let's rewind to, like, I think it's, like, three, four months into the pandemic, right? The George Floyd protests right. are popping off. Yeah. Things are... Crazier than we expected. It was supposed to be two weeks. Now we're like three, four months in. So right. It's weird. Like, what is this? Like, we're all like on remote lockdown. You know, conspiracies are flying. The country's burning. Right. We had we had the, the elections going on. Right. So it was it was it was tense. It was it was, it was weird. And I'm doom scrolling through Twitter. And then all of a sudden, that's just like Pentagon releases videos of UFOs, say they're real. Of all the times, right, to like bring that up is like right now during this craziest moment. So then, I don't think much of it. About a year later, and now we're a year into the pandemic. And now, I think it was Lou Elizondo started coming in, and 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 he's a whistleblower, and he's like, "Look, these things are real. They're among us." And what I can tell you is that the phenomenon has been going back. You know, not just decades, right? But like, yeah, but like radio. And so then I was like, okay, let me dig down the rabbit hole. I mean, even beyond it, like, like I remember as a kid, you know, going in and seeing like the National Enquirers about like the UFOs that swarmed the White House in the forties. Like, so we're talking like decades, right? But when you really re- revisit it, the phenomenon is there throughout history, right? Biblical writings, right? ancient cultures like the Dogons talking about star people. Um, recently, I can't remember the name, but there's this secluded tribe who doesn't even have the concept of aliens. But when they show them images of aliens, they're like, oh yeah, they live among us. Like, they live underneath ground. Like, you know, we have a word for them. You know, like, that's, yeah. that's this, whatever, like, tribal word, right? 
we call them the ant people. So when you dig in, there's a lot of these anomalies throughout history. I'm trying to find the quote from my favorite historian, Thornston Bedwin, right? But he has this quote that I like, I always, it always stuck out to me, but, you know, he was, he researched like the elite cultures throughout history, but he was doing it from the 1800s. Yeah. Okay, so very similar to what people are doing now, but picture somebody from the 1800s studying um, elite ruling classes. Shout out to the, to the, what? The aristocracy of aliens. <laughs> so that's exactly what he's studying, right? And he's like, okay, so no other species on this planet. It's like, no other, so there's no living um, creature on this planet that... You handled that like a champ, not knowing what it was. <laughs> no other species planned so far in advance. Like, it's like, yeah. not, no, not even humans, right? Like humans, we're thinking about, like, we want to set it. Right. You know what I mean? I want my, my kids to be successful. I want to have something to pass down that they can grow. So we're talking like, you know, grandkids and great grandkids, right? Right. So he was commenting on the phenomenon that the moves that ruling classes do throughout society, like throughout human history, across the world, are the only like species or examples of life that is planning their moves not for decades or or even hundreds of years on the but thousands of years on the Everything that they're planning to do, like for that particular group of people, they're not going to be around to even think about, right? But they're they're making moves thousands of years in advance, right? They want to be everlasting, in essence. And so, but that's the only that's the only speech. Like he was commenting on how like that's the only example of life, not even just human beings, the, right? The, like, but the, the ruling the class. class. And so I just, that quote just always well, stu stood out to me and I highlighted it. With that being a thing, though, it doesn't seem like too far-fetched for me just because if you think about it with thinking of the concept that aliens have been among us, some people have said that they are the elites, you feel me? As in the kings and the queens. Mm -hmm. And even kings and queens would say they were supposed to be ruling by the authority of God. Their bloodline was predetermined and predestined. And so it's like a lot of it comes off as just, you know, egoism and thinking you're an elite person because you had it told to you. But then how much of it is actually beyond what the common person was able to find out? And that's why you see this fascination amongst elite cultures, with bloodlines, the royal family, like, like all the inbreeding. With the right. And the genetics and keeping the family bloodline like. So the British royal family do this weird ceremony where they go out in Wales, they sit on these thrones of stone, like overlooking the ocean. Wales the place, not Wales. Yeah. Overlooking the, 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 the ocean, right? And like celebrating their genetic lineage to this like alien thing, like their purity to them, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, also if you think about it, bro, there's like, the different races of people were said to ascend or descend, my bad, from different species of or lines of either beings or people. So it's like, in a sense, it makes sense, but it's also weird because it's a concept we don't live with today about worshiping a deity or a being for our genetic line and not just creating the world. You yeah. know what I, mean? I don't know. I have no clue. So the more specific you get, that's why. But I can say, you know, the biblical text. The yeah, the book Quran, of Enoch. I was like, is there a book called the Jinn? No, no, no. Gotcha. The Jinn's in, in the Quran, right? You have... Oh, the, that battle? Are, yeah, there's ancient battles, right? Of these Bro, beings. so let's talk about that battle for a second and the beings in it. Because, like, the way I found it was through, I think, the Discovery Channel. I wasn't watching the Discovery yeah. Channel, but I was watching some of the people that had interviewed for the Discovery Channel about that topic. And they were saying it was really interesting to read the tablet and like to pick the story and think about it in today's time. Cause he was like, reading it is like reading a Dragon Ball Z battle. Like it's like reading an anime cartoon fight between people. And when he was talking about, he said one of the passages said there was a disc of light shot up into the air and essentially an explosion, 
And then years later, just describing the area that the battle took place in and then describing the people who were born, it would be similar to atomic warfare today with there being bombs, explosions, and lights. And then with the after effects in describing the area, it would be atomic radiation effects. And then what happened to the people, mutations, which would be mutations from, you feel me? And then this got me thinking beyond that. If this happened there, then, and then we have Hindu and Indian gods and goddesses that have multiple limbs and yeah. you feel me, what we would consider deformities in our modern culture. What if that was what happened? So, it was like atomic warfare and they said it was because of the gods that came so, and they revered it as being special. It's just because they didn't have the understanding that that's an atomic radiation. So at this point, the closer to the details you get, the more speculative you become. But what I do see is a trend throughout all parts of history of these weird phenomena. You have, I mean, just to fast forward, what I, I, I think we're at is have multiple civilizations rise and collapse, rise and collapse. Um, and so we're coming up and we're thinking where we think our origin began is the beginning of the end of our previous society. Okay. Uh, I think these beings live among us, it's the elite, it's the bloodline, whatever you want to call them, right? They went from gods to royalty to celebrity, etc. Right? Call them stars for a reason. You know, are the people like the Illuminati or whatever these secret societies are, are those people who have that knowledge, right? Whether it be direct bloodlines or connected to a being, I don't know, or they just understand like a truer version of history and what really is. But then are there those who claim that title or a pull at power who don't know shit? See, I don't know. The, the deeper you, like the more specific you get, the more. Right? What I do think is that there's a group, there's, there's chunks of society that really do have a clear understanding of what we call the truth and the true history. And look, I've had, had some crazy I mean that's where I came not the uh, the conclusion I came to was that we've had multiple resets, etc. We look at like the pyramids and these anomalies, these giant megaliths that are all throughout the world, Mexico, Egypt. You know, there's pyramids in China, um, et cetera. But um, yeah, basically during COVID, I was researching it, right? So that that quote from Thorstein Bevelin always kind of stood out, right? So I'm going down this UFO rabbit hole, and I'm like, okay, there's a there there. There's this phenomenon that exists. The military is reporting it. It's been going around decades. There's something technologically advanced that's living among us, right? So we're like 2021, right? went down rabbit holes. Eventually I hit a wall, right, in terms of research that is credible that I could no, of course. rely on. Right? At a certain point, everything is just yeah, it's so people, I, yeah, speculating and telling you. But I, what, what's weird, though, is the way that, like, the UFO phenomenon sort of awoke in a spirituality in it, too. So I watched this video about, it was a Lex Friedman podcast. It was with a theoretical physicist who was breaking down, like, how, like, hey, if Aliens did exist. They could operate on a completely different physics than us, right? That's right. wholly unintelligible to us, right? And so when you started breaking down the, the universe, right, we kind of forget how massive it is. <laughs> and as much as we know, it's, it's, it's such a small sliver of what we're doing, right. right? And what I got out of it, too, is like, with the, like theoretically, the way physics works is like, like it, it really does leave the room for like, Anything. The MCU to, to exist, right? Magic, science, and everything in between, right? Yeah. Could, could there are some people say that science is, I mean, magic is just science that you can't explain. Well, I mean, imagine if a monkey found a vending machine, right? It was like, hey, there's these bananas, and there's this force field that I can't get them to, but if I... If I if I do something specific, a light shines, and now I can get this banana. And they're like, no, you're crazy, Right. Bananas come from trees. So there's just this, there's just different ways that we can interact with the physical universe, right? And we're, we interact them in the ways that we understand, but there's ways that we can't, right? So that rabbit holds, you know, opened me up down that path. 
then around that time, <laughs> the gateway experiences started turned in on TikTok, right? What was that? So you ever heard of that? No. So, gateway experiences. So you got to read about the, the gateway experiences. So basically, the CIA was doing research on astral projection. Okay. And it was kind of, it, it was trippy too, because at that point I had gone down like this physics rabbit hole and was studying about like, string theory and dimensions. And so they start basically, I mean, if you read it, they're talking about the power of manifesting, you know, there's these multi-dimensions, there's this source that everything's distilled from, et cetera. And that if you like alter your brain frequencies, you can have out-of-body experiences. So I was like obsessed with that. Right, I was like, okay, because that now it's like, okay, if this, if there's, it's, it's just a, it's weird that there's just like information getting kind of leaked and brought out, and come to the public, but I'm like, okay, if I can have an out of body experience to experience what we assume is unexperienceable, right, these alternate dimensions and realities, etc., right, so let me do it. So I became obsessed with trying to have out of body experiences. I had a brief one right where I was like seeing myself sleep and then eventually you know about three or four months of like really trying to do it like you know meditating binaural beats and all these different strategies i had an out-of-body experience where i like basically like came across the spirit of the earth right like i was like taken into this portal like through through water into this portal and this like energy grid came in and somehow it just was communicating but like not like telepathically but like like i could feel it through my heart and it was like the spirit of the earth and i started going all across the world like you know rivers mountains and then it was eventually taken underground saw this like ancient egyptian looking guy really really than i'm seeing you right and he had this little pyramid in his hand and he hit it and sound waves came out and he started building like like stone with Sound. With sound, right? And then he looks, he sees me and then points at me and I like snap back into my body. And then after that, like, these videos started popping up on my timeline about Hermes, Trismegistus, and Thoth. And I kind of realized, like, that's who I saw. And then I found out about, you look up, like, Dr. Billy Carson, this concept of, like, psionics as, as a theory of building the pyramids with sound. Yeah. I never even heard of that, but I saw that in that vision, right? I never heard of Thoth. And then I... I've seen that. So I went down that. Have you path. seen the video online where it's like different patterns in water? Like literally the water is like flowing from like a spout, right? Mm -hmm. And they play different frequencies. Yeah. And like literally the shape that the water is moving and flowing yeah. in changes yeah. depending on the frequencies of the sound. Yeah. Like the sound was pushing it. In exactly. Shapes. And that's and that's what some people think is that that's this whole universe and this multidimensional reality that we're living in is nothing but sound waves vibrating through the ether at different oh you can't even say you think because like technically it's already been proven yeah that it is yeah. and not even just sound yeah. but the vibration you feel me it's like literally everything vibrating yeah. we know that and then we hear each other mm -hmm. sound off of the vibrations you feel me and so it's like speaking things into existence yeah. is built off of that mm -hmm. concept and idea you feel me so no it yeah. makes sense mm -hmm. Just really think. So, so then that that experience led me to going down like the Emerald Tablets and the Kabbalion and, and these. Explain some of these things, bro. Okay, so. <laughs> hey. Uh, I feel Kabbal like you're just talking okay. at me. Okay. Okay. So, the Kabbalion was the first one that I did, right? Which was written by Hermes Trismegistus and is allegedly like these occultic secrets that have been trans, like, uh, like um, passed off through different, like, people that are in the know in these secret societies and then eventually i think the 1930s they translated it and brought it out and it talks about all of these it's where that 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 saying as above so below yeah that's from so i think it's nine like universal principles about um is that saying about the it's like an alchemist approach to how like reality works right is like, the saying as as above so below is actually like one part of the saying and then two paraphrase yeah it's, yeah so I, I i i'm not sure about that but like that's that book is where that saying comes from right and so there's these different like universal rules right then you have the emerald tablets which, which was written by thoth and so thoth is a guy who the, was said to have transcended time and 
the reality we're in mm -hmm. and how it became light. Yeah. And so he, and her mistress, Magistus, who's behind the Kabbalion, is supposed to be an incarnation of him. Never heard that. Okay, yeah. So they're supposed to be the same character. And so then I started reading the animal tablets, trying to figure out, like, trying to, like, contextualize what what the, these visions I had during, I mean, whether it was an actual out-of-body experience or just a vision that I had during meditation, right? Now all So you're meditating? You weren't sleeping? I was meditating when I had this, right? So I was, like... Semi like, uh, how do you meditate? Like, type of meditation? Well, that one I was using a binaural beat, so I had like audio, I was laying down, I was meditating. What's a binaural sure. beat? So, binaural beat, so part of the, the gateway process is that, um, if you can alter the frequencies of your brain, right, you can have that experience. And so, binaural beats are two different audio frequencies that are played in your head to help your the different hemispheres of your brain sync up again into that. Alignment. So that's what I was doing when I had that. So, and then there's certain principles that do. Some people say you have to earn the ability to, to astral project. They won't let you, right? Certain people say yeah, you can induce it, psychedelics, binaural beats, you know, or different practices, right? Where you try to like <clears throat> stay conscious while you fall asleep so you can lucid dream and then through lucid dream. So there's different ways that people are trying to have these out-of-body experiences. But like I said, my fixation was trying to like experience these unknowable aspects, right? Like as a researcher, right? Like let me let me go in there and see see what I could discover. So if you're gonna get ready to try and recreate that experience, you're gonna play by neural beats and headphones or out loud? I mean Oh, headphones, headphones. So you're on them in headphones, and then you want to have headphones, so you have them fed to one ear versus the other, right? And then when you meditate, are you seated on the floor? Or are you on? A... I'm laying down. I'm like relaxing, you know, trying to like stay conscious as your body. Like you want to feel your body go to sleep and keeping your mind conscious. And so you want to try not to move, etc. Right? When I was trying to do it, there were certain. They talk about how, like, there'll be certain things to pop up to distract you, right? Like, you might hear somebody pounding on your door, or your phone will ring, and it'll force you, like, oh, I have to wake up now and do that, right? So, you like, you hallucinate something to wake your body up, right? And so, I had some of those right before I had that out-of-body experience where I felt like I was entering in that state. Sometimes it feels like you're going to die, right? Like, I felt like my heart was going to explode, or, like, somebody was knocking on my door or calling my phone when you look there's nobody at your door your phone doesn't have a missed call and you're like whoa that's trippy you know so yeah so that's how i had that experience but that experience like right sent me down that rabbit hole and then i just found this correlation between like when you dive into the spiritual community right with like you know it's it's funny right because i was like a very like skeptical academic you know, quote unquote intellect, and then the, the exploring the UFO path turned me into like a mushroom eating, like crystal wearing hippie, essentially. And so then I started seeing this correlation between shamanism and spirituality and then interacting with these beings, right? So now, if you fast forward to 2024, you see certain people talking about how these beings or this phenomenon are non-human intelligences are not necessarily like from other planets right but different dimensional higher dimensional beings interacting with humanity through different ways people are talking about them being spiritual in nature demonic angelic etc right and again the more specific that you get the more speculative you get but um now we'll fast forward four years into the pandemic it's become a more mainstream topic. There's recently articles of, I think, uh, Harvard's publishing that there's secret societies that could be living amongst us, whether they're crypto terrestrial, so meaning a type of intelligence that evolved on Earth that are technically Earthlings, right? And so they, they use the potential of like technologically advanced dinosaurs that have stayed in hiding that survived the extinction of dinosaurs could be behind crypto. uh the, some of the ufo phenomena. Wow, phenomena right so they're technically earthlings right? they're crypto terrestrial they're 
on this planet, right? Um, they could be interdimensional, they could be interstellar, right? They could be living among us. So when it comes down to like what it is, right? So I, I, I spent some time, you know, studying with a shaman and stuff. And she like, if you can see the world as it is, it's like the Star Wars cantina bar, right? Where there's like, we think it, it, it's just different races and different people living among us, but it's so much more than that, right? So all these different beings. So you could have shapeshifters, you could have beings that are, look just like they're humanoid, right? But they're they're more advanced, right? They could be. We could have beings that just manipulate how we see them, whether it's like psychically or technologically, right? So I could be sitting down next to some octopus-looking being, right? But I see a human, right? I could sit next to a human that looks human, but he's really a type of a being. It could be an actual shapeshifter or whatever, right? Or everything in between. So, I mean, you know, that's where I'm at. I spent time bartending. You talk to people about this stuff at bars? Yeah, so I had a five-star resort, right? So I had a lot of, like, elite people coming in. And one of the guys that came in every week was a retired intelligence officer. And he was telling me how, after 9-11, he helped put together um, their the, the protocols to share classified information between intelligence agencies. Because one of the things that was credited towards 9-11 happening, right, was that intelligence agencies didn't have a way to communicate. To communicate. So he was explaining, he's like, yeah, they have the, they have their own separate internet, right, outside of ours that yeah. they use to share. And he's like, I had my work computer, my top secret computer, and then my top, top secret computer. And he was telling me how, basically, that uh, he had access to 99.9% .9 of all classified files. The 0.1% he didn't have access to revolving on Area 51, right? He's been to Area 51. He's seen the rooms that were associated with the restricted files he didn't have access to. He's seen parts being moved from one place to the other. He overheard conversations. And he's like, I can tell you with like 90% accuracy, we have at least nine crafts in the Area 51 and biological bodies. Well, I feel like that... I've heard that information myself, not so, like yeah. firsthand, but it was, I believe, a guy who was a, um, a pilot at some point mm -hmm. for the military, like highest grade pilot you could yeah. be. And since he was such a great pilot, they told him to come mm -hmm. and then inspect these crafts. Yeah. And they have been trying to just figure out how to get it to fly. Mm -hmm. But they had had it for over 10 years. Yeah. And it was like, he said once he stepped into the cockpit, it was a plush room like everything was flushed together like you couldn't figure out how to get anything to open pop out there were no yeah. buttons there was no control panel but they knew it was supposed to be some type of craft that moved yeah. uh i don't remember like too much more about his story i feel like he said one of the three people who were there mm -hmm. ended up figuring out how to turn it on but on accident yeah uh, so yeah and that was my experience, right, with somebody like that that had that experience. So the fact is, right, there are these these stories that exist amongst, you know, military, intelligence, politicians, right? A big push for disclosure is coming from politicians who are sick of being, like, walled, right? They know of these phenomena. They're hearing reports from military, from that. They want to know what's going on, but every time they try to find it out, they're not supposed to talk about it. Silence, right? And part of the reason, bro, is because people will go Dust crazy. Threaten. The, the American population, just the human population, bro, but everyday people they would just be like, oh, my God, fuck, no! I think, see, I think that's the, the instinct and, and, and the narrative that's, like, told to us. I absolutely agree. Some people will have existential meltdowns over it. I think more people are are would be way more open or like unfazed as they think. I hear that. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, like, there's a particular way that society is structured to benefit. I mean, we can all agree, society works really well for a very small portion of society, right? And it's a lot more challenging for pretty much everyone else. And in the end, when we see these billionaires with hundreds of billions of dollars, right, we can't even really conceptualize what 
hundreds of billions of dollars is, right? I mean, somebody, there was a, a really powerful video that I saw back when I was, you know, doing my like political organizing phase. And this guy takes the grain of rice is basically equivalent to $100,000, okay? So he takes that and, and like a million dollars is about a pile of rice, the palm of your hand, okay? So then when you see a billion dollars, it's literally like this cushion is a billion dollars, okay? Versus like a million dollars is the palm of your hand. So now when we have people that have hundreds of billions of dollars, it's literally like this room filled with rice and people don't even have a grain out of that. You get what I'm saying? So we have that, right? We have the Pentagon is consistently failing audits, missing trillions of dollars. Bro, and with that being a case, this is a reason why I have to question why people don't question the government more often and they believe that the people who are in office are put in office to actually do something for your life and your good. Why do you believe that? You feel me? The Pentagon is missing trillions of dollars. Trillions. Why are we worried about Donald Trump lying about the money he made? We already knew that. And then look up all of the presidents, right? Obama talks about aliens, Clinton, Bush, right? And there's these weird secrets about it, you know? And it's like, like we were talking previously, right? We're seeing these hotels with human trafficking cases, right? So when we really look in it, right? And just as, as my journey as a, as a, as an, um, and I've even, I've even had very close, candid conversations with people who have been at the top of industries, you know, I've, I've worked with celebrities, et cetera. And at a certain level, it all boils down. It, it becomes, it's all gangster and intelligence, right? If you look up Operation Underworld and the merger of the intelligence community with organized crime, okay? And so there's, so all of these celebrities were seeing, look, Diddy, 30 years running a sexual blackmail campaign, right? So that he can traffic not just bodies, but drugs and weapons. And have, 30 years, he, he's, he should be, he literally is retiring from organized crime. Like he had a full career spectrum. Everybody is entangled with it, right? Doing what Epstein did, okay? Well, bro, again, though, it's like fun. you just said, bringing up the name of Epstein, is like Epstein was rich as hell to the point where he had presidents coming to him. You feel me? So it's like, again, why do more people not have more questions is my biggest question. And so it does, it, it gets weirdly entangled, too, like bringing up Epstein, right? Like he used to threaten people with demonic curses. Bro. The guy, the guy that empowered him and financed him lex wexner right was the owner or founder or top guy at um victoria's secrets he used to say demons used to tell him what to do okay and then that's the other aspect with the phenomenon in the in the intelligence uh, so now with uh, with that right like um, if we're talking about like these non-human intelligence living amongst us, right? This is the reason why I think the disclosure is, is because they've been just using and abusing humanity. The metaphor that I heard that's, that 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 kind of helps me conceptualize it is: Have you seen Westworld? Yeah. So you're familiar how you have the ro robots are used and abused to the whims of the people. They come in, they live in this fantasy world. They're they're aware that the world is greater than, than the Western scripts that these people are playing. And that's essentially how these non-human intelligence are treating us. We're the robots, we come in, they have the, the true stories, but they get to live these fantasy worlds, use us and abuse us. If you look at the Book of Enoch, which is an ancient text, they talk about how they taught us a lot of sexual perversions, war, et cetera. No, for sure. So they come in, they use and abuse us. And that's, well, that's the real reason why there's this like big hush. Like, I mean, I feel like it's still all this lines up too. Just the simply put is, I don't want to say simply. I'll say simply, but it's still not as simple. Mm -hmm. But like the story of good and bad, you feel me? But it's like once you get to a certain point, mm -hmm. how do you know the good and the bad fully? You don't, mm -hmm. and so that's where they're able to, you feel me, have the wiggle room to placate people into their agendas. And then mm -hmm. what you're saying about the Book of Enoch is like the beings that came before the earth, 
was the earth essentially you feel me so it's like they were there when everything we know was created it was pretty much like a parent yeah. to a kid yeah. where it's like i built this house from the ground up so i know how it all works as above so below that's the and it's like so that's you that's need that. to know how to turn on the stove I'm going to tell you this is some magic. Yeah. Oh, my God, we got fire in the house. It is, I bet. I could teach you how to do that, but I need something out of you for it. Yes. You feel me? And it was just really interesting for me reading the book of Enoch and thinking outside of the context of Christianity. Because like you're saying, it all is way more interrelated than we know. And every civilization is starting on the back of another civilization but we're also talking about us. So we're keeping it separate so we keep our mm -hmm. story and bloodline clear. But if you take that, like I said earlier, egoism out of it because everyone wants to be the best and you realize the stories are actually interconnected, mm -hmm. but it comes out way different. If you read the book of Enoch and think about the Battle of Gilgamesh mm -hmm. happening within the same hundred years, I don't know if it did, but just thinking of the concept of them trailing right behind each other mm -hmm. makes it so much easier to have a story that sits better together than saying, I don't know this and I don't know that. Because it's like bare minimum. We have the earth, right? We have us humans, right? You have a separate race, class, identity of beings or people, right? Mm -hmm. And now they intermingle. Yeah. And so at the bare minimum, whether you talk about demigods, Hindu gods, or the fallen they were not meant for this world or dimension right they're, they're not they're not meant for this system so once their physical that, being dies on this realm mm -hmm. where do they go and that's what makes me think about the fact like when you think about area 51 or I said talk about area 51 there's this video i saw where they had uh, equipment that was taken from the nazi regime bro yeah. and it had no power source mm -hmm. the shit was still talking right. you feel me and so they were like yo where is this coming from because there's no way it's coming from machinery mm -hmm. and then it started addressing people and things in real time you feel me as opposed to saying once there was or this is going to happen it was like a person by this name or that thing there like you had to be in this time period to understand the concept of that item it was talking about. Yeah. How? And so this is a concept that I thought about where we were saying that the spirit source of these entities and beings of the caliber mm -hmm. could not physically interact with this world anymore. The yeah. concept of demons. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. But they still need to interact in order to get things done. The concept of possession. Fast forward to the concept of building physical bodies that are supposed to be meant to extend our capabilities. Or if we oh. get prosthetics, you feel me? So, but what if it was a suit built to house so, the soul of so, of so, 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 watch season 10 of American Horror Story. Okay. The last half, the season is called Double Feature, right? The first half ironically is about how in order to become successful in hollywood you need to become a baby eating vampire okay the second half is about area 51 the, the narrative of that story is all about um basically eisenhower cut a deal with the aliens to allow them to experiment they're trying to create a hybrid race in exchange for that they give us technology and they're trying to create a hybrid race because their species is going extinct and they needed to like live on the planet, but they couldn't. So they needed to, to blend their DNA with ours to have that, right? Or in other words, a housing for the souls that can't exist on this dimension. But I mentioned that too, because that is a big conspiracy theory, but that intelligence officer that I spoke with, right? And for like over a week, right? Told me about how he had a long conversation with Eisenhower's granddaughter and how he did cut a deal with the aliens, but he didn't know the extent. The extent. And it was basically like he thought he was doing one thing and then it was he's just opening us up to be for, like for, that woman was saying, an so, interplanetary highway for anyone to come and stop by. And, and that for, for beings that don't belong here, and that's why they say part of this, this the, 
the, the abduction phenomenons are creating these hybrids. So Bro, I read these, this book. These, these biological Back species. when I was in like fourth grade, there was a book I read that was talking about, like, we all know how there used to be kids, missing kids on cartoon, or cartoons, cartons of milk, yeah. and in the papers, and it was like, you, like you just said, a phenomenon. Mm-hmm. All over. I read this book, bro, where it was the story of the kid who had been abducted and bought back. And he was saying he was bought back from aliens. Mm-hmm. And then he was like meeting other people who had also left. But some people never came back. And most of the people, when they did come back, had no concept of ever being gone. I just think about that now. Yeah. I was like, bro, when I was in fourth grade, why was I reading that book? Yeah. And I read this other book that That's was talking saying, about astral projection, this, bro. This stuff has been around forever. It was these two girls who were split up from their family, and one was raised, like, Western white culture, but they were really, like, Native American Indian. Mm -hmm. And one of the sisters grew up still in that culture and started coming to see her sister. And one day, the sister ended up going to see her instead, and that's when she was like, what the fuck is going on? Why am I not at home? Like, and again, bro, I was, like, not even 10 when I read this book. (laughs) It was just, it was a, what do we call it? A fiction, a fiction book. Oh, it was entertaining. That's what I'm saying. It's 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 there, it's sprinkled within it. Again, too, that kind of speaks to what people say, right? Like the Illuminati or whoever is supposed to, right? The seat the, the controlling elites, they tell us what they're gonna do to avoid the karma because then we consent to it, right? So that it speaks to what I read in the Kabbalion, right? There's these different principles of of the way society works and and the master alchemist can 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 control them. And in the combine, he talks about the master alchemist will learn how to ride the highs of karma, right? So you can take what you want from it, right? But if you understand the way the universe works, when that pendulum swings back, your debt is due, that the master alchemist can avoid paying that bill, essentially, right? Avoid the negative aspects of karma, which is why people think they... But these truths in our fiction, right? So they're telling us what to do. We're consenting to this behavior, even though it's a manipulation and it's a falsehood, right? But to yeah. avoid their karmic debt, right? That's really interesting because I guess to a certain extent, is like the first part of what you said is that they have to tell us. Yeah, I've heard that for forever ago. Is like when it comes to spiritual law, is to a certain extent you can't get over on somebody spiritually without letting them know. Or putting it in their face, whether or not they're aware of the consent is another question, but you did say it. Well, what it is, is there's a karma, there's a cause and effect, right? It's not necessarily even right or bad, but you do something, you you do A, B is going to happen. And so they're using a, a manipulation of this phenomenon to avoid the negative consequences. And then About supposedly... Essentially saying, yeah. I already told you that this is what the outcome is. And then so where we're supposed to be at is the age of Aquarius, this new time where... Aqua? Where supposedly, you know, this is where the truth is coming out. These old systems of control and manipulations are falling apart. But Basically, they are. Means, look, look across the world, bro. Exactly. Look across the world. Exactly. America's politics, Russian Israel. politics... Israel, like God, bro, I don't, you know, come on now, across the board, what country is great right now? Nothing, nothing, nothing. I haven't heard shit about Switzerland. <laughs> so these systems are of, of control are falling apart, right? They're dying and the truth is coming out, right? These beings have gone away for however long without paying their tab. And now their tab is due, they're freaking out. And everything's collapsing and falling apart in between. And that's pretty much the the journey that I've come across to come to this conclusion. You know, but I mentioned that too, right? Like look like watch that season, right? It's it's there. Also look up here's a fun little conspiracy theory, right? Look up these the Hulu alien commercials. Put that in YouTube. I think I've seen it. Yeah, these weird commercials. I think I showed you them, right? Like these aliens, right? Like you know. Feeding off of humanity, right? It's, it's just... Yo, you know the, like, symbiotic suit from, like... Spider-Man? Bro, yeah. just last week, two weeks ago, yeah. there was a substance found in Vegas mm. that was just moving and forming, bro, just like a black gunk yeah. on the ground. Yeah. Somebody researched it. Essentially, bro, it was the same type of idea as that. And then I was listening to random, super random. Yesterday just popped up on my timeline, a pastor, bro, yeah. who was talking about CERN. 
Mm-hmm. And they're, what is it, Collider? Yeah. And he was saying that they were trying to manipulate, in a sense, Black matter yeah. and anti-matter. Mm-hmm. And it was saying that the more you like focus in on the anti-matter, mm-hmm. the more anti-matter it starts trying to collect and pull out of things. And it was just, he was speaking of it in the same concept, pretty much how Spider-Man and the Venom suit yeah. was bringing out an alter side of him. You mm-hmm. feel me? Yeah. It was like trying to collect all this antimatter is going to break up mm-hmm. all of the opposite of what it is we're trying to manifest. When you manifest matter, you feel me? You start to think about growth, building, and forward. Yeah. You the antimatter is going to be all things that yeah. are going to degrade the positive effects you're working yeah. towards. So he's like, what the are they doing over there trying to collect antimatter and build that up so they can yeah. release it essentially? And he was like, if you build a portal out of antimatter, what the fuck are you expecting to come out of it good? And then we see things like Stranger Things, right? But also to, to dive down the rabbit hole of like Marvel lore, like if you go deep, especially in the comics and these things that were written, you know, decades ago. Right, start mirroring these parallels of Atlantis. Oh, bro, it's all is everything. It's, it's the it's, same it's, stories, bro. They're, they're the same they're, stories. They're everywhere. It, you know. You think Atlantis is real? For sure. For sure. You think it's still underground, underwater? I mean, I think that. Okay. I think. Apple. I think. I think aspects, technological, spiritual, political tools of Atlantis exist. Part of the secret societies, right? Or whatever these controlling elites, whether they are or not human beings or combinations or in between or whatever, have elements of that through advanced tech, spiritual practices, and and systems of control that were taken from Atlantis and 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 imposed on society to this day. So yeah, I think because I mean if you talk about a lot of the like our our mo- our mode of government is mirrored after the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire mirrored after the Greeks. The Greeks mirrored after Egypt. And Egypt is supposedly where the advanced tech and the aliens and the fall and this and that. So so yes, I mean even on a historical element, right? There's that lineage that 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 falls into. I feel that's something a lot of one. I didn't realize that Rome took over Egypt. First off, like I guess it's like. In a sense, I did, yeah. but it's not told to us in that fashion yeah. or in a linear like tracking. You, bro, you don't yeah. connect your seventh grade yeah. Ottoman Empire shit to you. Feel me? It's like I, I didn't, but just mm. yesterday, I was listening to somebody say. I think it might have been Billy Carson, bro, mm. and he was like, "People don't understand that Rome just built on the back of Egypt, and essentially." They took over Egypt. I was like, yo, that's crazy. Because then you talk about the Vatican, bro. And then the, like, manifestation of the Pope's control over the whole world, bro. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard to even wrap your brain around, actually. Yeah. Right? It's overwhelming. Just saying those three sentences and then thinking about the amount of information that was housed in each of those bodies separately that had nothing to do with each culture. And then to think one culture and house through all of that and then tell nobody that's crazy. The Vatican is big as hell, bro. You know, so I just Googled like, I was like, how big is the Vatican and what's in it? Bro, they got the whole museums and I can go down the whole rabbit hole to Philia with the Vatican, right? Like I, that's one thing I studied, like ancient sexuality from Greek and Roman cultures, you know, and just look, one thing I speak. I don't even want to say this. This right here is the type of shit that'll get you canceled, bro. But one reason for the use of sodomy Mm -hmm. is because, bro, if you penetrate that area Mm -hmm. violently, Mm -hmm. there are nerves in there that connect directly to the brain, Mm -hmm. which, if hit, split personality because the person wants to separate the trauma from them. Mm -hmm. So you automatically create a split personality which can be awakened by hitting that nerve again. And then what's going down with Diddy and Meek Mills? And, and uh, if you heard the audio, if you know, you know. Like... Bro, it's crazy. It's crazy. I low-key don't even want to post that part, bro, because I know so many people are just going to like, people who aren't in any type of 
all of this is bullshit. Yeah. You got him in the advertising. You fuck somebody in the acting train or with the personality in them. Well, not if it's consensual. I'm, not saying, I'm, not saying, I'm saying there is a nerve in that area that is triggered will create a split personality in somebody. There's a difference too between consensual love sex and no, for sure, and how that trauma happens. No, 100. percent Exactly. I'm just saying, not everybody is. Yeah. You feel me? There's. Uh, if you like butt stuff, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> but if you start tweaking, don't play nobody. Yeah. So, so there's this, there's you know, it's I'm telling you, bro, it's it's deep. It's it's it's. Yeah, I'm gonna get canceled for my podcast. even take off. We did not talk about you taking that one damn picture, bro. My photos are good. Check them out. You can find my Instagram at Troy Michael Photography. But yeah, I'm telling you, dude, like. It's, I mean, in the end, too, I kind of knew when I picked up the camera, it was going to be my tool to kind of navigate through society, you know? Not only did I feel it, like, was the the channel for me to connect my, like, creativity through my storytelling um, background, right? I just knew it was going to be the tool that navigated me where I was going to go. Just instinctually, when I picked it up, this is before I went down these rabbit holes, right? And I picked up that camera and was like, this is going to be my guide, right? But it's, dude, it's it's a strange, strange, strange time to be alive, for sure. You know? I mean, I don't know when it isn't. Right? I was going to say, I think it's just a strange world. I was expecting you to say it's a strange world because, like, all of that was happening since forever. So it's always been a strange time to be alive. Because everybody's like, oh, I miss the 90s. There's this 90s nostalgia, right? Like, oh, I miss the 90s. So, like, that's when Diddy was at his haste. Stop, stop talking about Diddy. Damn. You know, you, you know why I, like, I, I really, like, gravitated towards the Diddy story, too. Because, because this nigga has been on that grant, bro. Listen, I had an 82-year-old woman come to work and say, Sean Combs is in the news. Mm. You talking about P. Diddy? <laughs> That's why. I understand. This is an 80-year-old woman. Well, she has the same picture as a 20-year-old. But, like, for me, too, like, growing up, like, I was in middle school when, like, Bad Boy was as Diddy, Mace, the two... No, yeah. Eve, right, and then Tupac being killed. So, like, he was, like, a a pivotal role in sort of my like cultural Bro, this event, is right in everybody's cultural yeah. but then it's also weird too with it but not just music politics too like i was yeah. my wife was like because my wife is from japan right and she was asking me she's like why why are you so political and i was like you know in the 2000s there was this big push Stepping out to like almost make you feel like a bad person if you didn't vote, yeah, right. And then they brought in and Diddy had and who had the voter die campaign, Diddy, yeah, right. And now you have this weird connect like he has political ties, bro. It's dude, it's yeah, it's yeah, and he killed Tupac, one of my favorite artists. (laughs) He's not he's speculated to have. I didn't. I, I, he's, yeah. he's, 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 don't put me on his grand jury because I will invite. He said, I got no love for the man, bro. He lied to me. He he had me believe in him. I was a Since I was in middle school, bro, I became an adult and found out he's a fraud. I was a fan and everything, too. You know, I used to listen to. Oh, bro, look, everybody loved. You feel me? It's like my family's from New York. Right. So it was like, since I was yeah. old enough to watch TV yeah. and remember it, mm-hmm. he was on TV. Like you said, Mace. Exactly. You know, My family was, was, TV, you know, I was born in, like, in, in LA, right? So it's like that. Like, it's, then I grew up, I grew up middle school. The Sean John sweatsuit? Yeah. I used to be stomping in my Sean John sweatsuit, bro. Right. Like. Uh, and so this is, this is what I'm convinced these people play, right? Is that. If we're connecting it to everything we talked about, we have this secret world of mess, of mess existing hidden, and people like Diddy launder it and clean it up, are laundering and cleaning, it. make it look and cool, they're, and they're they're nodal points of global of 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 global laundering, right? Turning the the messiness of this elite society, whether it's whether it's just human beings being human beings or aliens or in between, right? Isn't it? They're, clean, they're, they're cleaning up the, these nodal points 
of that and, and filtering it and selling it to us as something to aspire to, to participate in, to consent to. Because I'm a certain level, bro, to invest you got to understand yeah. and at least maybe at least hope this is not what they set out for. Like, come on now. Who sets out to be evil, vindictive, and cruel mm-hmm. at the heart of it? So, you feel me? So, so it's like so, that's why you build it as a desperation. So, so that's where my biggest like philosophical like question is: is like why, right? Because I understand like you go out, you get a little tipsy, you get a little egotistical. Hey, girls like me. You get a little deviant. You like to fuck around, fool around, etc. You can go down that path, but. We're, we're just you, talking you, about you, collecting antimatter. When you look at when you look at what they're doing though, it's some evil, evil shit. Bro, look. So how does a kid go from being a four year old innocent baby to a murdering drug dealer? Desensitization, introduction to things over time. You feel me? It's not a so, overnight fucking process. Well, <laughs> what I think it is though. Is that there are. You separate yourself from source, and I think that's where we are as a species. Is that we're separated from the from from source? Okay, and not to cut you off, but I agree one hundred percent. And again, the same concept: you have all this antimatter, mm-hmm. you have all this matter. Source is going to be matter. You feel me? Everything derives from this. So the more you hone in onto it, exactly. But if you're gathering antimatter around you, uh-huh. within you, and Physically, you have no choice and but it, to be right and, it's, and it's fed off, it's yourself. fed off of malignant narcissism, narcissistic personality disorder, and sociopathy is a big like and so common trait say into, that's what's, into, into what's into what's happening. In Those are yeah, psychological yeah. ailments. Yeah, indigenous but you people tell you that it comes people, from spiritual reason. Indigenous people would say like the Wetico, right, would look for those thought patterns in human beings, right, and then and then it's start the start and start. And start with like little selfish sins and lead you down this path. And before you know it, you develop a, a narcissistic personality disorder. So now you're vibrating at a frequency so that these demonic entities like like so Exner has talked about can attach to, can manipulate, can 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 do. And then two, like I, I wanted to bring this up in this little perfect time is one of my other he's my, my buddies, he's getting his PhD in I think Michigan right now. And so we were both going down this rabbit hole at the same time, you know, during COVID. And it was weird, too, because I was like, oh, I haven't heard from my friend in, in a while. And then, boom, I get a phone call. He calls me 10 seconds later to share me this this video about how academics are actually, it's it's a small portion, but they're studying the relationship between occultic practices and scientific development, right? Meaning how some of our greatest scientists, the best example is Sir Isaac Newton, the apple fell on his head and he discovered gravity and blah, 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 was actually a massive um, alchemist and occultist and using a lot of spiritual practices. Maybe there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of, lot of these scientists who, who, who go out and, and also look up the FBI files about Tesla being an alien too. Well, I'm yeah. Not from this planet? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, so basically, um, but there's a phenomenon of like these people doing these occultic practices, you know, um, butt fucking a, a, a chicken during while, while having blood splattered on them or whatever, right? Or worshiping this this deity, but they enter, they do these dramatic like occultic practices to like prove you know, themselves. No, no, and then taking substance or whatever, but they alter their consciousness oh. to come into communication with these beings. Right, and they pull them out, and then they come back and pull these these equations from the ether, and now they have rocket technology or whatever, right? Where they 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 create these 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 systems, so they alter their consciousness through these pra- these weird occultic practices, and then from that altered state of consciousness, they come in. Well, now I can manipulate material so, um, That's crazy in a very particular way. Um, some people say. Uh, that the reason why Jesus said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do is because of the fact that things were going to get to that level of, like, undetectability. You feel me? Whereas, like, if what you're saying, I'm not saying if what you're saying, but with what you just said, holding true, 
that means that this technology in front of us is based off a formula that they did X, Y, and Z to alter themselves and do a spiritual practice to get to. And now we're all sitting here playing with the spirit that came out of that. Do me a favor. Pop out your SIM card from your phone. One side is going to have like your IMEI number and like your, your, your carrier's logo. Flip the other side, right? These little bars. And look at those little bars and tell me that if you saw that in the sci-fi movie in the 80s, you wouldn't think that's alien technology. Bro, I remember one time I just thought about what the chips look like in our phones and like the amount of power that they have with like bringing images and sound. But when you open it, it's literally chips. I was like, bro, this is alien technology. I was, that was, probably, I was probably like 16. I think it was the first smartphone I got. And I was like, bro, this low key would be like alien technology. So I, I have a friend to whose cousin worked for, I think, Lockheed Martin. Right, but it's one of those it's like Lockheed Martin or Raytheon. I forget which one. He, you would think he's insane, right? And he's will not allow like TVs in his house. And he's like, it's not, it's not like even necessarily the narratives that they were selling to us. It's the frequencies, bro, that, it, they do. that are coming off of them. They're not mm -hmm. humanly like. Mm -hmm. There's so many frequencies. The frequency that we even listen to music at, there it's, is it's uh, to, to call it's not meant to. It's not natural. Everything vibrates at a certain resonance and frequency, and there is a natural harmony and resonance to the actual earth. And the frequency that we listen to music in does not exist oh. in nature. They literally chose 44.1 because there is no equal, there's no way to equally, like, not equally, but what is the word? Naturally reproduce. Naturally and evenly get to that sound. 44.1 Frequency hertz, kilohertz, does not exist in nature, ever, nowhere. And all of our bodies are programmed to listen to it. Our brains are programmed to think in that way, to think the music sounds good. If you listen to songs that are synced outside of that, you might not like the song automatically because it's not familiar. But it's not familiar because it's actually natural. And we've been listening to unnatural sounds for the last, like, like 40 years. And why do we think there's these weird gatekeepers on this sexual blackmail and his dark patches that you have to get to that status. How many celebrities talk about song of the souls, Kanye West and Katy Perry making the song about, about boning an alien. Kanye right. said he sold his soul. J. Cole said he sold his soul. I'm pretty sure Jay-Z said something about talking to the Katy devil. Perry said sold her, sold her soul. They all, it's all over the place. And two, there are artists who like to make music that are tuned to frequencies harmonious to the body but we can't even accept it because we can't even get it fully filtered because all of our all of our the spotify's and adult speakers and are tuned and are tuned and even before Spotify. that yeah once you upload it onto spotify and onto apple mm -hmm. they go through their own sound like formatting yeah. for the platform yep we don't know what all is going on during that you feel me but i have met engineers and producers who set the frequency yeah. in the project to 48 kilohertz or 44 even yeah. kilohertz and you can actually hear the difference if you listen to one and then listen to the other back to back you can hear and feel the difference sometimes yeah which is why things like like ancient stuff right meditating <laughs> fasting you know sitting in silence being out storing nature is good for you because it tunes you into the world. Dude, the other day, cool. I told my wife, like, I, we went to the beach, I put my feet in the sand, and I fell Barefoot. asleep. Barefoot? Right? And I woke felt up, that I woke up, and I was like, dude, if I could wake up every fucking Bro, you felt at feeling least. as refreshed as I did. But no, that just makes me think about the pyramids again. We're talking about sound. I had read this book that was saying that the pyramids, bro, were actually sound chambers. Mm -hmm. And after we did, I've had two theories now. That one, I'll explain, but then also what we were talking about earlier and how they were using it as means to move objects and build with. There was one that I read that was saying it was a sound chamber that was supposed to beings, humans essentially, but reach different states of consciousness, yeah. but also enlightenment. Yeah. And that they would put you in the chamber and begin playing sounds throughout the uh, pyramid and it would echo and resound off of it, yeah. but the vibrations would send you through each stage of human emotion. You feel me? So it would make you have to deal with anger, to sadness, to happiness, to rage. So you feel me? So you would go through them to reach enlightenment. And so just thinking about that and having sound 
that sets your brain in different states and leaves you in a different state. Yeah. It's really interesting. And I'm like, oh, sounds plausible. Yeah. If that's the case, sound is way more important than what we exactly. take it. It's literally, but well, that's that's what we are. We are a wave vibrating through the ether. And that's why it's all frequencies. And, uh, and then these frequencies like coalesce and build off of each other and create this multi-dimensional reality. We have the word universe, right? Uni. One verse, meter, rhythm, song. You feel me? Oh, we're all a part of the universe. We have a heart. That's why the, the Hindus think, uh, you know, own the sound of the universe, right? It's supposed to have spiritual practices. Mantra is prayers. Think about um, Catholic churches and the oh, you know, and and, and their and their and, and and their buildings had acoustics behind it, right? Yeah, it's, it's, that's interesting. It, I don't it, like to it, think it, about the Catholic Church it, in that manner. In certain in certain um, towns, had their bells ringing, right? For certain you know, times, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, there are so it's it's. I mean, it's there. It's big. Like it's. It's just people, you, so people supposedly heal, heal tumors with it, right? Like, oh, there's been studies where people have done just consciousness focusing. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Where someone with an ailment will lay out on the table. Yeah. They'll gather 30, 50 people in a room. Yeah. They'll meditate and start mm -hmm. chanting or just sending the energy, bro. Sometimes quietly. But they'll all send their energy. Mm -hmm. And I saw it. I, I think it was when I was in school. A teacher was telling us just about it. We had meditating classes and... uh was it move it was essentially called movement class and we would do yoga and with our yoga practice we would meditate right and so she was just showing us this video where they had centered their focus on tumors in somebody's body and they hooked them up to whatever type of machine it is that you use to view a tumor and they saw them shrink in real time as they sit there yeah and and what i would say too i feel like you're gonna have like three people that are, you're gonna have three main reactions that people are gonna have to conversations like this. If you know, you know. And you're watching, and you're watching like, yeah, I get it. Then you're gonna have those people who are like, damn, this makes sense, and then you're a little bit freaked out, right? Don't freak out, man. Just relax. You know, you're gonna touch some grass. You know, eat eat clean, meditate, maybe do a little fast, right? Don't don't let it. This is all about frequencies and vibrations. So you want to do things to keep yourself positive and uplifted, right? That's all we can do too. Because regardless of this conversation, you know, it's chaos outside, right? And so um, the best way, a lot of people, you know, I was going to tell you, in order to find peace, everything needs to be in place, right? But spirit will tell you, in order to to for everything to fall in place, you need to find peace, you know. So. Find that peace, hold on to it, right? And everything else will fall into place from there. And, you know, aside from that, sit back, grab grab some popcorn and enjoy the show because it's only going to get weirder from here on out. I feel like you might get a better understanding, so it might not be considered weird. I feel like for some, like, personally, I expect everything. Nothing hits me as weird no more. So if we get weirder, shit, I'm ready. It's yeah. like, just the other day, I saw, it was like, people are, are disappearing into thin air. Mm -hmm. and I was like, what is it was on ig so it was like probably 10 different locations people were in an airport people were at the doctor's office and literally bro it was the security camera footage and people disappeared and i was like what the fuck i googled it and it came up with like a bunch of results like it happened bro and people had posted it in real time on social media and then somebody was like bro all right so i know about the rapture and it says this is going to happen Somebody commented underneath it. It's like, yeah, this is just real life programming. So once the rapture really does happen, we'll look at it as being normal. Or what other people think too, which sounds like to, to it enhances what you're saying is that, you know, once your frequency attunes to a particular vibration, you can exist in, the, in a different dimension, right? So dimensions stack on top of each other, right? So if your frequency raises and you go to a higher dimension, all of a sudden you just disappear. disappear. So you could be physically in the same spot, but not at a frequency that somebody else could 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 measure. No, yeah. You know, one thing I was thinking one time, this is when I was in high school, and I don't think I was fried, but it was a fried nigga thought. Sure. I saw somebody driving down the street, and I was like, what if someone else could not see them driving down the street? Yeah. Or what if while they're driving down the street, they're not actually on the same street as I am for them. You feel me? Like their perception, they're in a whole nother reality than the street that I'm on.
but I can see them on my street. But once they go down the road and pass me, he's like, they don't even exist in this world. So it's just, I interacted with them on this. Level. So it's similar to the thought that I had for sure I was toasted. It was, it was definitely for a fresh sure. thought. But I was on Twitter and there was a tweet about like the Vatican and it has all this gold and these tunnels under seas and they're, and they're taking them from the Vatican. They have these tunnels and there's trillions of dollars worth of gold in these tunnels, etc. And you can't find anything online and people, and, but you read the comments some people are like, oh my God, it's true. And how could you, how could you question this as if they're that? And I'm like, what if these tweets got entangled from a different timeline, right? <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, I can't find nothing on my timeline. And these people are like, how the fuck do you not see this? This is all over the news everywhere. And I'm like, you're bullshit. You're crazy. And we're sitting here like cross tweeting against different dimensions, you know, different timelines. So similar to what you're saying, right? Like you're driving down the road. If you see somebody, but they're not in the same <laughs> road. You're like, now you see these tweets and you're interacting I, with them. I had that <laughs> thought as a, as a kid, like second, third grade. I was, I was like, how do I know? Like, I know like I'm looking at your shirt and it's black, right? And we can both look at the same things and see it's black. But what if it's your black is my red and my red? Like we take for granted, we assume that we're seeing the same, the same thing as everybody else. The same frequency, but... And no, that's sometimes where things happen where people do like disagree. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, we were both there. Like, how do you, you feel me? Mm -hmm. and, yeah, no. Nah. You know, and and I'm, I look. I know it sounds crazy, but there's so much out there that you haven't experienced, right? Like, I always tell this to like, there's there's chunks of society that exist that most people don't, right? Like, when I was in LA. I had a wealthy friend from Beverly Hills. I got to go to some elite, you know, some crazy parties and, and mansions and, and behind the scenes and nightclubs. And, and I've seen some stuff, right? And I remember one time I I, I brought this, uh, one of my uh, uh, friends from college to, to one of these parties. And it was a nightclub and it had, uh, what's it called? Like naked girls coming down from the ceiling, like a hundred feet up on ropes, serving champagne. That's how lit. They had, they had uh, they had like these these uh, graphics that said the bourgeoisie all over the walls and lasers. And I was in the elite VIP area, right? And I was surrounded by a group of people that I've never seen anywhere in life, not on TV, not in movies. I think would be about this. It was a bunch of tall, tall, gorgeous white people, blonde hair, blue eyed, weird looking, like almost too perfect, right? wearing the most extravagant jewelry, you know? And they just had this, like, you could just feel this. I felt like I was like, I could feel this energy. Like I used like the, the, the nightclub scene from Blade where I felt like I was like food to them. There was this hostility, like what the fuck are we, doing? like, what are we doing there? Like, I could just feel it like energetically. And I look and my friend looks over at me and she's like, do you feel that too? And I'm like, yeah, like it's fucking it's just palpable. You know, so, like, <coughs> almost nobody is going to experience that little set of society. You know what I mean? Like, out there. So there's um, there's whole chunks. When I was bartending at that five-star resort, people would come in with these black cards with weird logos and, like, brag to me about all the stuff that it unlocks, right? There's, like, whole segments of societies, like, out there that exist. I witnessed, like... You know, an auction. They were literally auctioning off Asian women to 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 rich people. There, like, it's it's weird, man. It's it's, it's great. Yeah, to segue. Okay. Next, like twenty minutes, we about to talk about real life. Okay, I'm just thinking, it's yeah. like a lot of that combo. I don't know. I don't know. Just go with it, bro. It'll, that's the shit that'll go viral. Post the whole shit. Chop it up, clean it up, but yeah. I mean, yeah, of course. Like, run, run with it, bro. That's the shit. That, dude, that's what people are, are hungry for right now. You know? What was the name of your podcast? Social Alchemy. It doesn't have any platform other than a Twitter handle, but... Well, no, no, no. Just, like, I'm just thinking. Bro, you got me thinking. Like, <laughs> multiple things, you feel me? It's like, with you, just the way you are and you're talking and everything. I'm, like, thinking about, you feel me, like... 
what your podcast would look like. You feel me? So, like, my mind just totally works like, too much. But like, but like everything we just, we did, we went over, but let's deep dive into it, right? Let's like sit down and 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 spend a whole di- a whole episode on the Kabbalion, what people say about it, history, you know. So with all of these studies and everything that you found, how have you found a way to one just keep yourself sane? with the idea and the concept of like what I'm looking at as reality might yeah. not be reality. I mean, I think at this point where I'm at, I'm kind of expecting something big to happen. And I mean, I think, I think for the most part, we all are there, right? Like we're, we're teetering on the brink of like nuclear war. What's right. going on abroad. We're, we're, we're living through in a collapsed economy, but, they're not saying it's collapsed, so we're waiting for like, it. The economy is collapsed. Bro. I feel like it's definitely broken with the way people were just getting money, like the PPP loans and like... I mean, the economy is... I, dude, when I first moved out in 2003, I paid $800 a month in rent. It was for two-bedroom apartment, $800 a month. My share of rent, my share of rent was $200, okay? My share of rent was $200. I can't step outside and take a breath without spending 200 bucks, you know? And so, yeah, it's like, and, and, and I, and I want to emphasize that too, because now you can't get a two bedroom apartment for $2,000. Okay. And our, and our wages have not caught up with that. Our economy has collapsed. So when I say I'm waiting for something big to happen, I'm like waiting for war to break out. Is it going to happen? Are we gonna officially declare war? Is the economy like yo? The, the what do you think about the draft? I was co- talking about war. They just a lot of people probably did not catch this. They implemented a bill that requires or requires every twenty six to thirty year old man to enroll in the draft. So, I mean, exactly stressful. I mean, I, my little brother, for you kid, you feel me? Like, of course, we hope there isn't a war. But with the fact that they're enacting a draft, is like you're obviously preparing for something. Either that or the military hasn't I mean, been getting people. So my background with radical activism, challenging power, speaking truth to power, you know, fighting for revolution. I guess what I'm saying when I'm looking for big change, I'm, lo- I'm looking for a revolution, right? Whether it be the sky cracks open and we see the truth before us, all of a sudden you turn around and you look and the car next to you is filled with lizard peoples and gray aliens or... Um, or that the truth comes out that the government, I mean, we know it, right, is, is behind the trafficking, the drug smuggling, the, the, the terrorism, right? Every, like, we are the source of evil. Everything we fight, up, we, we, we're, we're waging wars against, we're, we're funding as well, if not financing. We're financing, funding, training, and, and implementing, right? So I'm kind of hoping, like, where I'm at, like, you're talking about staying sane. I think it's like this slow drip, like, I'm like, when is it all? When is this house of cards going to come down? When is the bubble going to pop? Or what people say, right? Do I still have to keep paying bills, right? That's kind of what everybody is waiting for, right? We know we're being screwed. We know we know we're being manipulated. To I feel like some whatever. people really believe that it can all change if people just decided it will. And when I say people decided it will, they believe that if me and you and every person we know came together and fought one common cause, that things would really get better. And not to say that, yes, we could all fight one cause and probably see some difference in our lives. Mm -hmm. But what you're talking about with it all being bigger than us, no. Because, yeah, we might placate the people, Mm-hmm. To shut them up, you yeah. feel me? It's like I don't feel like the average person takes into account themselves, the past, the future, and what we don't know. If it's not broadcasted through one of the major publication sources, it's just so I null and void trash. So there's this phenomenon, right, where they call it these conscious from their skirts. So they did this study in Japan where these monkeys like um, had these, uh, they started washing these, like they gave them these dirty sweet potatoes and they started washing them before they ate them, right? And then all of a sudden 
when that when that monkey learned that phenomenon to wash the potatoes before they ate them, monkeys on different islands of Japan started doing them, even on random communications, right? Something similar to is like at one point, whatever the fastest model is like, at one point, no human being had ran a faster model than four minutes. Then somebody breaks that four minute model. And then all of a sudden, more people do more it. People do it, right? So I do think there's like this grid of consciousness that connects everyone. I think in the end, we all are all divine beings, right? That are being denied our birthrights of what we are. And that is co creators of the reality that we are. Do you think that might be because of so being, many of us? And we're being passed. Well, I think that everything we talked about has been trying to suppress that and harm that and taking our creative capacity to create the reality that they want. War is inevitable. Bills have to be paid. This has to be done this way, right? Like, and we create this reality that's that agreeing to it. Yeah, we're 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 co-creating it, right? But what what I think is going to happen is it's it's going to be like like popcorn popping. Like, one like one person pops pop 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 pop. Before you know it, you're going to have everyone, and and the, and that's when the massive change comes. You know, and so I think that in the end, I have hope that the average person is more than just a passive consumer, a sheep, a slave, or whatever. Right? We are divine beings. You have a lot of hope. And that as and that as 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 people start awakening, I'm telling you, it it, it, it trends, right? That's how this is the only reason I say that. I just watched the video where they did the study in a doctor's office, right? They had how we're set up here, just waiting room chairs, and it was about eight people and one person who wasn't in on it. And everyone stood up. Every time there was a bell, the bell went off like every minute, every three minutes or something like that. And the actors would stand up, stand up. Yeah. It took about 10 times. Mm. And then the one person who didn't know why they were standing started to as well. Yeah. And then just to further test the experiment, they had every actor leave as if they were just a patient, mm -hmm. go to see the doctor. Yeah. And the one person who had been the test subject left in the room still stood every time there's a bell now more non-actors come in yeah. by the end of it every person who came in the exactly. building stood when the other person stood without mm -hmm. knowing why they were doing it and that's the only reason why i say you have a lot of hope well because because cheap that is where we're at right we're, like we're trained but what's happening though is that people are waking up right and we are connected to that grid and there's a there's a non verbal way that that information is is spread about time and space yeah so basically to use that metaphor more people are realizing this is all a hoax yeah. they're getting up and leaving that waiting right that's gotcha. and so what's going to happen is is people are going to be like wait he left like i can't leave oh but then he left and Look, I'm everyone's going to get up and leave i'm one of the leavers he <laughs> i hear that and i feel you and that's actually just something i was thinking about earlier today in a sense and not necessarily that same grand scale, but just being someone who inspires other people to take action because they see you took action. You feel me? Whereas like, I feel like everyone needs to see that in order to be inspired. I guess that maybe not everyone, they're those you know, brave, lone soldiers who yeah. just act on a whim or are more tapped into source, but I don't know. I just thought that was interesting to think about seeing someone do something and not even necessarily the same thing, but like this is a stretch from what I knew you as, and now I see you in this new light or this new thing. Right. Maybe I could also move out of what I know myself as or what I see myself as. Okay. From aside from how do you keep yourself, you know, even kill with all of that information, mm -hmm. how have you found a way to incorporate it? in a way that furthers not just your life, but your professional goals? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. You know what no, I mean? that's real. I, 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 I think, like to answer that question, I think it's still unfolding, right? So, I mean, I guess the way this, that I have implemented it is, is to, I mean, go back to like, you know, ancient positive practices, right? Not getting attached to the outcome. Right. I find that a lot of, you know, my suffering or anxiety, like I was just talking to my wife the other day, we watched Inside Out 2. Was that? Uh, 
the Disney movie, the the sequel to Inside Out. I see somebody to tell me I need to see it. I don't know what it's it good. is. And so they introduce a new emotion, anxiety, and then you can see how a lot of this stuff is like. Basically, you know, depression, you're living in the past, anxiety, and living in the future. Centering <laughs> yourself, trying to be more present in the moment, okay? Especially amidst the chaos, right? Understanding that there's a connectivity between us all, so we can navigate the chaos. If things don't pan out the way you want them to, it's okay, because we're all right in the same wave, right? We're in this, you know, contextualizing the situation. We're all in the situation of crumbling power structures. And we're in that weird position where, A, they're not admitting that the systems have failed. And we also don't have the replacement in there. So there's that level of, of anxiety and, and uncertainty being in that position. So, you know, adding context to it. Entering into an observer position, right? Understanding that, you know, this is a simulation, a dream, a hallucination. You think really like that, a simulation? It's my, uh, yeah, I mean, at some level, right, whether it be just that we're, that our consciousness is connected to something larger, not physical, and we're experiencing, and we are experiencing a separation or a forgetfulness of what we are cosmically, and we're having this moment, and so we're kind of stepping back and entering in an observer state to just kind of watch what's unfolding around us, you know, enjoy the pop, you know, get, get present, be in the moment. Right, be aware of your frequency, right? So be thankful, even for even for the, the times that you're struggling, right? Um, and not be attached to the results because as as quickly as you I feel like a lot of us are like trying to work towards, especially as an entrepreneur, right? I need to build this so I can have this like plateau. Now I can rest, right? I have built this. And it's like as quick as you get to that point, there's gonna be something else. So if you don't if you can't enjoy the process of the journey and get it there, you're not going to enjoy you actually getting there if you have to do it. That reminds me of the question, what's more important, the journey, the destination, or the people mm -hmm. that you're making it with? Well, in the end, right, it's, it, it is the, the, the journey, right? And if you embrace the journey, then the people matter more, right, in the end. But you know like i said it's 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 a weird strange ride we're on right so just take your hands off the roller coaster have fun with it okay enjoy the ride and see where it takes you for that and i feel like that's definitely something important for like you're saying someone who has a goal mm -hmm. or if you're trying to start a business or be an entrepreneur or something you're gonna have an endpoint. And even if you do reach that end point, are you going to quit? Like, you automatically hit retirement? Like, no, there's going to be a next one. So you have to be able to find that even line regardless. And sometimes it looks like stepping away from that focus on achieving yeah. and finding the peace of just being in the moment yeah. and enjoying yeah. the fruits of your labor, essentially. But if you're the type of person who is super goal oriented, sometimes the fruits don't even matter as much as proving to yourself that the goal was attainable. Yeah. 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 For sure. You know, I feel like that's another reason why practices like meditation are important, even yeah. outside of the trying to astral project with it, mm -hmm. because just meditating alone will bring you to peace and a calmness and a still that if you allow it will transcend that moment into the rest of how you interact and how you behave and how you be and that once you get that peace with you mm -hmm. you can just take in things without feeling the need to react it's hard of but course. don't grasp be in the moment right appreciate what you have i, I, feel, not, what you I, have. I feel like you can you're, you're gonna you're gonna be able to navigate whatever life throws at you at that point, you know. I feel like the statement "appreciate what you have" is an interesting thing to say when we live in a world, bro. Where literally, all I have to do is pick up my phone, and I can open anything outside of my caller and my text messages, mm -hmm. and it's gonna show me something I can buy. You feel me? Like there are ads everywhere. 
down every day. And if you open any social media platform, you're going to see Get Ready With Me. You're going to see clothing hauls. You're going to see advertisements. And even if you weren't thinking about what you needed, all of a sudden you think about something you can't have or you can't get, you feel me? And so, yes, uh, it's just you need to, also you need, but it's nice to have something that can anchor you with all of the distractions. Yes. There you have it, guys. Aliens are among us, and you might be one of them. Yeah, you probably didn't hear it first, but if you did, you know, you're welcome. See what happens. <laughs> you know, bookmark this, save it for later, when we see what happens. Well, thank you for checking in. It's been another episode of Sake Sundays. Salud.